What's up you guys and welcome back where today we're going to be talking about peg ratios. We're going to be going over what they are, how you can calculate them, and how you can use them to evaluate stocks differently. So hopefully you can make better investment decisions or at least not invest in stocks that you otherwise might have. So a peg ratio, PEG, is going to be your PE ratio divided by your earnings growth ratio. And if you think about it, this is going to do a couple of things for you. But before we get into how this is useful, we'll go ahead and talk about the actual math behind it just on a simple level. So uh, you're essentially going to have your PE ratio, which is going to be your price to earnings ratio. Um, that really comes down to, you know, if a company, for example, was making $1 billion a year, they would trade at a 10x multiple. So uh, that's going to be 10 million, right? So that's going to be your PE ratio. And then your earnings growth ratio is going to be the growth rate between the previous period's earnings and the current period's earnings. Once you get those two numbers, you take those and divide them together, giving you your peg ratio. I'm not gonna go too much into the math here on this just because you can get the peg ratio automatically calculated on a lot of websites like Yahoo Finance. So don't really need to exactly know how to do the calculations, but uh, they are useful to know exactly what you're looking at and the factors that can affect it. So this is useful for a number of different reasons, but uh, the biggest one is going to be the evaluation of growth because as we know, PE ratios are going to differ on pretty much every company out there and it's really hard to tell what a company should trade for when you know maybe it's a different industry, right? Because uh, Amazon, for example, a few years back I remember was trading at around a 260 PE ratio. That sounds really high, but when Amazon increased their earnings quite a bit over the next few years, their PE ratio went way down into around the 60 area. So that's something to consider because Amazon's trading at a 260 PE ratio, whereas you know General Electric, for example, might have only been trading at a nine. Um, basic math would tell you General Electric would be a better investment because it does have a lower PE ratio. It's got a lower valuation. But the fact is, General Electric is not a growing company, whereas Amazon was. So PE ratios don't really take into account growth, and they also make it much more difficult to evaluate you know, what kind of companies are gonna be better valued outside of the same industry. If we take BlackRock and Blackstone, for example, these are both giant private equity firms. These two companies are very, very similar. So it's easy to look at these two companies and say, hey, you know, uh, Blackstone's got a nine PE ratio and BlackRock has a 12, uh, Blackstone's gonna be a better investment. But it's pretty difficult to take a company like Selenies and Shopify and compare those two together just because they are completely different companies. So the peg ratio is essentially a PE ratio that is going to factor in your uh, earnings growth and kind of uh, quantify that in the situation. Another thing you have to think about is the fact that this also in a roundabout way factors in how well a company is utilizing their resources because let's take a cash rich company like Facebook, uh, they're trading right now at around $390 billion, but they have 80 or 90 billion in cash on hand. So if we take that exact same company that's trading at a $10 billion valuation and go give them 5 billion in extra cash, extra resources, well now the company really should be trading at 15 billion. So you know a 10x multiple on uh, actual value or earnings growth, um, and then five billion for direct cash. Now this company's trading at 15. 15 divided by 10, their uh, P peg ratio is gonna go to a 1.5, so uh, not as good. So if a company does have a higher peg ratio, it could be that they're not utilizing their resources to the best of their ability, and at the end of the day, there's no point in a company having cash that they're not gonna be using. Um, at the end of the day, you really would like a company to have the exact amount of cash that they need uh, and nothing more. Now, that is gonna be a perfect world scenario. Obviously, companies do need to have stores, but you know, if a company like Google, for example, I wanna say has 200 and some billion dollars worth of cash, um, there's a good chance that utilizing their resources as good as they could, or at least as good as you would hope. 
But if you guys don't want to look at peg ratios and PE ratios and all of that boring stuff, and you guys just want somebody to invest just for you automatically, I wanna show you guys a little bit about Acorns. Acorns is going to be a app that'll actually automatically invest for you straight off of your phone. You can set up auto deposits and you can also set up rounding. So uh, if you go to the store and you buy a 75 cent drink, it will actually charge you 25 cents for the change you would have got in real life if you were to use cash, for example. Um, and then you can actually have that auto invested into your account, making investing seamless and easy uh, without the ability or need to keep up with uh, stocks every single day or do anything like that. And right now, if you guys sign up using the link in the description, you guys are gonna get $5 completely free as soon as you make your first deposit. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to click that link in the description. If you guys wanna learn more about the stock market and specific uh, financial instruments, be sure to click subscribe to the channel. If you guys got some value from this video, be sure to click the like button. And with all that being said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace.